All right, so in this tutorial video, we want to look at some classification of the states of discrete time Markov chains in R, okay? So first, we want to clear all our working environments and graphics using this code of line. And the next thing that we want to do is to load this required package. That is a Markov chain package. If you don't have this package installed, you can install it. You just have to click on packages, click on install and type in the name Markov chain. Make sure that you are connected to the internet to complete the installation, okay? So once you are done with the installation, you have to load this package using the library function. So I'm going to run this. All right, so now let's take an example. So we have already seen this exercise from our previous tutorial, and now we want to solve this in R, okay? And before you watch this video, I will urge you to check out my video tutorial on the classification of, this, of the state of discrete time Markov chains by clicking on the link in the card above or check the description below this video for the link, okay? So that I wouldn't waste time trying to explain the concept again. So the state space of the one-step transition probability matrix of a homogeneous Markov chain is given by S, where we have the state to be five, one, two, three, four, five, and those are the transition probability matrix defined below. We have our current state, our future state, and the transition probability matrix. So we want to show the state transition diagram for the above Markov chain. And secondly, we want to classify the state of the Markov chain into communicating classes, reducible or irreducible states, absorbing states, and closed class. Okay. So how do we do this in R? So first, we have to get this transition probability matrix. If you're able to simulate this, then we can solve for this, okay? So let's try and get this transition probability matrix. Let's jump into our, our studio. Okay, so now I want to create our matrix. So the transition matrix, we are going to move by row. So we specify this to be true, okay? So we are going to pick this value, 0, 0, 0. So 0, 0, 0.2, 0, 0, 0.3, 0, 0.5, 0, 0.3, 0, 0, 0, 0.7, in that order up to one, okay? So by row is true. And we also specify the number of rows to be five. So by default, the number of columns rows will be five because this will give us a square matrix, okay? So let's execute this, control enter. So here we go. So now we want to add the current state and the future state. Um, let's make use of the new function. So in here, we are going to make use of the new function. We call the package Markov chain. These are transition metrics. We also have the state here, one, two, three, four, five. And I'm giving it a name to the DTMC. You can choose to give it a different name. So I'm assigning this to the variable DTMC, okay? So let's try and execute this. So here we go. So we have now simulated a transition probability matrix on the side. We have the current state, we have the future state, and also have our transition probabilities, okay? And this looks similar to what we have on this slide, okay? So now we want to show the state transition diagram for above Markov chain. So we can make use of the plot function on the transition probability matrix. So once we run this, we can see the state transition diagram. So here we go. If you try to zoom this, this is how it's going to look like. Okay. So if you think this is not the best diagram for you, you just have to um, run this again. So I'm going to run this again. Control Enter. And the diagram will change. Okay. So I'm going to run this again. I don't like this. I'm going to run it again. I'm gonna run it. I think this is okay. So when you zoom this, so this is how the state transition diagram will look like. Okay. All right. So now let's take a look at the second part. So now we want to classify the state of the Markov chain into communicating classes. Okay. So how do we get a communicating classes? So um, there's a function that we can use to get that. So we have the communicating class, communicating classes function, which is coming from the Markov chain package, okay? So let's execute this, control enter. So in here we have three classes. The first class is made up of state one and state two. 
The second class is made up of state three and state four, and the third class is made up of state five. And I think you can see this from the transition diagram, okay? So this, this is the first class, state one and state two. The second class is made up of state three and state four, and this is a third class, okay? Now, take note that we, we, we know that two states communicate if they are accessible from each other, okay? So to check for accessibility or to find out which of the states are accessible, we can make use of this function. That is the accessible function. So we have, let's say, want to check. So check. I want to check for accessibility. So we can make use of this function is dot accessible. Okay. So let's try and execute this. Control Enter. Sticking to link to show the results. All right, so there we go. So if you want to check for accessibility, you can use the ASCAT accessible function. You can see the results here that um, state two is accessible from state one. I just see that state three is also accessible from state two. Okay, let's assume we, we are just interested in only two states. So I'm going to specify, let's say we are interested in state one and state four. Okay, so this basically means that um, starting from state one, we want to find out if the Markov chain will ever get to state four. Okay, in other words, we want to find out if state four is accessible from state one. Okay. So let's execute this, control enter, and here we go, it's true, okay? All right, so now let's continue. So with the second part, we still want to find out, um, sorry, I think. Let me zoom this again. All right, so I think this is okay. All right, so uh, we want to classify the state of the Markov chain now into reducible or irreducible state, okay? So how do we check this out? So if I make use of this function, so um, okay. I can make use of this function is not irreducible. So this will help us to know whether the Markov chain is irreducible or it is reducible. Okay, so let's execute this. Control Enter. All right, so we have it with force. Okay, so it means that the Markov chain is um, not irreducible. In other words, the state, the Markov chain, the state is reducible. Okay, so we are, we are going to have a, an, um, we are going to have a reducible state, okay? Because the Markov chain is not irreducible, the state becomes reducible, all right? Okay, and I think this is true because we don't have a single communicating class, okay? All right, so now to the last part, we want to, now classify the state of the Markov chain into absorbing state and closed class, okay? So how do we get the absorbing state? So in R we have a function known as the absorbing state function. So this will help us to get a result of interest. So let's execute this. So here we go, we have the absorbing state to be state five. Okay, and we can also see this from the transition diagram. So if you check the transition diagram, you can see that once uh, the Markov chain enters this class, which is the state five, it cannot escape. And the probability that we are going to return to this state is always going to be one, okay? So um, 
this is an absorbing state and take note, take note that every absorbing state is also a closed class, okay? Okay, now similarly, we can see that um, class two, which is made up of state three and state four is also going to be a closed class, okay? Because once the Markov chain enters in this class, there's no way we can escape, okay? So this um, class or yeah, which is made up of state three and state four, is also going to be a closed class, okay? However, if you check that of class one, which is made up of state one and state two, it is um, not closed because it is possible to move outside this class, okay? Can move outside this class. Okay, so I think we are good to go now. All right, so um, basically this is how to classify the state of discrete time Markov chains in R, please. If you find value in today's tutorial video, don't forget to subscribe if you have not. And thank you for watching.